Well, economic growth is what we're looking here. If you're looking at the GDP growth rate, this rate, that is economic growth. Now we're in a crisis, and therefore this is minus eight, the last estimation that we had for 2020. Do you remember the points that Iñaki mentioned before with crisis with negative numbers? So 2009, 2008, actually it's not negative, but 2009 is clearly there is negative, another crisis. What explains this one? Yeah, what explains that we have this economic growth rate? And what explains that in the 60s, for instance, we have this other kind of economic growth rate? You can see even 11, close to 12 in the 1964, in the case of Mexico. Yeah, but what explains this? And this is economic growth. This is the question that is coming. This is the reason that it's important to, to get all this data. This is important. You can see that GDP actually has um, different variations. Yeah, what is this one? And there are many others, guys, when we're discussing gross domestic product. And it is also true, not because Lopez Obrador mentioned that many times, many other scholars mentioned that GDP probably is not the best way when we try to discuss and to measure economic development. That is a different concept. Economic development and economic growth is not the same. But now we focus here, yeah, in economic growth. And therefore, 30 about the accumulation. And this is what we're discussing right here, right now. Here, growth and accumulation. And let me look for somebody, help me reading. It's my computer. Okay. So per capita GDP divided by population, income per person. Here we have some graph. Yeah, here we had GDP per capita, four countries from the 1820 to 2000 and something. And here is the GDP per capita in dollars. Yeah, I'm not sure this is constant dollars. Most probably it's constant dollars because it's not clear here. But this is what I'm asking you for your homework. Yeah, what is GDP per capita here? So GDP per capita here. This is GDP per capita I'm asking for you. Uh, somebody who was born in the 1960s, the GDP per capita in this country was close to $4,000, yeah? And then you go to the year when you were born, and then you can go to the last figure we have here. This is what we're discussing. We're watching how this is behaving. And here, we cannot sell for these countries, the US, Japan, Norway, and Ghana. And you can see what is happening with these kind of countries, yeah, with this Afri with big African country. And you can see and have an idea more or less how it's looking in Mexico, and then how it's looking in Mexico, Comparing with many other countries, that is the this is the reason the uh, the Congo is important, and we would like to discuss what well, explain that, yeah, and to discuss that to explain that first there is an assumption, we are in the very long term. This is the reason we had all these centuries, all these years, the case, in the discussion because to be able to understand and to find explanation why these countries are behaving like this and these countries behaving like this, we are assuming that we are in this very long term, right? Um, Andrea, please, can you go ahead, Andrea Michel? Growth accounting. Growth accounting explains what part of growth in total output is due to growth in different factors of production. Okay, this is one uh, key variable, one key strategy in economic growth theory. And growth accounting will tell me from this growth that you show me here, yeah, what proportion, what is explained by different factors of production? Because we mentioned before, and we will mention this again, what is plain economic growth? According with the neoclassical position, the neoclassical school, that, that is what you are studying, uh, factors of production and the level of technology. That is what is plain that the US is here and Ghana is here. Why US here and Ghana is here? Because of factors of production. More labor, more capital, a best technology. Less labor, best, less capital, and less, uh, less technology. That is the reason according with this explanation. Actually, there are many, many other explanations about the economic growth. And here we are just using this growth accounting. Growth accounting, well, will tell me this, yeah? Uh, the part of the growth in total output that is due to growth in different factors of production. Then later is coming another present, uh, another slide explaining this correctly. Andrea, go ahead. Growth theory explains. Growth theory explains how the economic decisions determine the accumulation of factors of production. Example. For example, how does the rate of saving today affect the stock of capital in the future? Okay, later we will see that saving is highly important because we're assuming that saving later is capital, capital formation, that means investment, this capital. And because you are increasing capital, and I know that capital is a factor of production, so my output should be increasing and should be displacing economic growth. And in per capita terms is the most important because in per capita terms, I'm removing 
the impact of labor, I am removing the impact of population per person. And because I'm assuming that other factors of production, land is constant. And I assume that technology is constant, how I'm combining my factors of production. Well, here is the, the production function, the function, the production, the production function that we mentioned before many times. And what they say? Well, your income, your output, GDP in practice, yeah, when we try to measure this, and I'm telling you in theory, well, we're using GDP, it's the most popular indicator, but it's a proxy of this theoretical concept. And to try to explain what is affecting this GDP, I'm using this function, yeah, the production function that is also something that you can apply at the micro level. And what I'm telling you here, that your income, your output, your GDP depends on what? On A, A represents technology, yeah, and this output is outside of the function because this is a constant in my model, depends on capital and labor, depends on my factors of production, depends on your input, yeah? And then this A is my productivity, that is technology. If I'm assuming that the marginal uh, productivity of labor and the marginal productivity of capital is greater than zero, then I'm expecting that an increase in these inputs, capital and labor, means an increase in output. You should remember from microeconomics what means this marginal productivity. Yeah, we mentioned that in introduction to economic science, we mentioned that in microeconomics, for each increase of one unit in labor, because this is positive, that means that my output should be increasing. Yeah, no, will not be negative, for sure, could be constant, but this is happening here. And also behind this idea, we had a, a law that is not a law, it's a principle of diminishing returns. There are diminishing returns in everything we are discussing here. Yes, equation one relates the level of output to the level of inputs and technology. Mm -hmm. Transform the production function into growth rate from form to show the relationship between input growth and output growth. The growth accounting equation is? Let me interrupt you. Okay, equation one is what equation one? This is equation one. Very simple function and putting technology outside to tell you that your output, your income, your GDP equals, will depends on what? on my capital labor, given the technology. Do not forget that, guys. That is a very simple case, the most simple model, actually very simple, yeah? It's a very simple explanation. Now, I would like to see how much this output you are talking about in your theory, income, GDP in practice, how much is this changing, yeah? What is the growth rate? This growth rate, yeah? What is the growth rate of this one, yeah? And how can I explain that growth rate with my model? Well, simple, I'm telling you that depends on labor and capital. And let me use N. And let me, for simplification, to tell you that N is population. And here we had capital. What capital? Physical capital, yeah? Machines, uh, buildings, everything you are using as physical capital, physical stock to produce other goods and services. Factors of production. Why land is not here? Because land is constant. And therefore, I can remove now land from my model, yeah? Because this will not be changing. And because land is not changing, Probably you don't know the amount of oil, the amount of gold, the amount of silver in your country, but it's constant. Let me remove that from my equation. And then according with this broad accounting strategy, I will tell you that this change, this economic growth rate will depend on what? How much is changing your labor and how much is changing your capital? In what proportion? Well, according with my model, equation number two, one minus this symbol, and this symbol here, what is that? The proportion, if this is 50-50%, let me assume that is the case. What could be 50-50? Because of your technology, yeah? Let me assume this is 50-50 though, so this means 0.5. One minus 0.5 equals 0.5, and this is the proportions, yeah? And my technology is here outside. When technology is improving, we call that technological progress. We don't know what to explain that in this model. This is an endogenous model. Later, chapter four that we are not discussing here will explain uh, the uh, endogenous model, this, sorry, this is the exogenous model, then in the chapter four is an explanation of the endogenous model. What this means? That there is something in my model that also will display this technological change, technological progress, what is but now it's just a constant also, but it's highly important and it's here. Technology will tell me how you are using combining capital and labor. And therefore, your economic growth depends on the amount of your labor and the amount of your capital and the proportions of these two factors to explain this change in income. The question in your exam will be look to this, very similar to these kind of examples. Let me read the first one and then somebody else will help me with the second one. And let's do it together because it will be something very similar that you will find in your exam. I will not ask in theory, what is this one? You need to understand this 
to be able to answer this using these kind of examples with this kind of numbers, yeah, this kind of figures. And then first, let me tell you that this symbol equals 0.25. If you go to this question, this is 0.25, and therefore this equals how much, Shinyaki? One minus 0.25 equals? 0.25. This is 25? 0.75. Right, that is the, the kind of questions that you can find in your exam, yeah? Here it is, yeah, 0.25, therefore y minus this one equals 0 0.75. Here we have the values. We got this and this. Now tell me how much is changing your labor and your capital? And here in my example, I will tell you that labor, the global rise of labor is 1.2, it's a percentage change, yeah? How much is the change in this one, divided by this one is a percentage change. In this example, 1.2, just an example, and in the case of capital, 3%, yeah? And then the rate of technological progress, 1.5. What this means? This one, how much is changing technology? 1.5. This change here divided by this change here equals 1.5. This is general example because I'm still working with a theory, yeah? If you want to see how in practice we try to do something like this, so this is the reason I ask you to read my paper. Yeah, and the other paper, then you will find how in practice we try to measure something like that, something like that using this kind of data. Yeah, then using the formula, you can see that this 0.75 times this one plus this times this one plus this one equals this number, 3.15 percent. So I will be using something very similar in your exam where you should to demonstrate that you are understanding. This equation, I will not ask you this to replicate this one or to select this as the correct answer, but using these kind of numbers. So let's do it uh, slowly. Here we have the, the calculator to try to estimate what is happening. Yeah, what is this? Uh, the value of these proportions, 0 0.25 and, point, uh, and 0 0.75. I will give you these kind of numbers, for instance, and then you need to multiply 0 0.75 times this increase in my labor, my labor increasing 1.2%, and you will get this number 0.9. And then the same with this one, yeah? 0.25 times my increase in capital, my capital is increasing in 3%, and then you get 0.75. This plus 0.9 equals 1.65 and plus 1.6 plus this plus yes plus the increase in my technology 1.5 equals 3.15 and i got this result they are thinking that labor is first and capital is first, but i can do it different capital could be here and labor could be here and doesn't matter actually what is the uh, that you have this one minus the symbol or the symbol here or the symbol here what are you doing just do not forget the 100 percent of the change in this one should be a proper this the chair from this and this i don't have land here well if you have land here also you need to tell me what is the proportion for land the model is very simple because using one minus this chair will give me automatically this other chair when you have land so it's more complicated in my mathematical model i had to specify what is the chair for labor what is the chair for capital and what is the chair for my land if I'm analyzing this in a very more complicated way and not talking about factors of production, talking about inputs, and let me assume that I had all the inputs that could be millions of inputs in my process of production. So I need to tell you what is the share of each of these inputs in this final outcome here. This is for simplicity because in the end, do not forget, it's not about to, to really estimate in your case what is happening here. It's about the idea. If I'm asking you, and you will see when you are analyzing your data and, and looking what is happening with my country, uh, versus other country and why I'm observing this in the US and this in Ghana, what is my answer to explain why Ghana is so bad? Well, according with this theory, it's very simple. The answer is very simple. Why the US is here and why Ghana is here? Because of factors of production. In the US, I will find a lot of labor, a lot of capital and a very high level of technology. And here by contrast, yeah, I will actually will not find so much labor, not so much capital, or could be, yeah, labor is, but capital, there is not capital. There is not physical capital in this kind of countries. And technology, very different. The technology in the US will be very different and the technology here will be very um, underdeveloped. That will be the one, right? And therefore I had an explanation. When you're looking why Mexico versus the US and you will see Mexico over here, 
Yeah. Why Mexico is here and the U.S. is here? Well, the answer by these guys is one answer. It's not the only answer. Factors of production and technology. If you want to see what is the difference of, between economic development between countries, that is your first answer. You remember here I had the level of GDP per capita in the case of Mexico, nine, and the case of Russia, 11. Why this difference between Mexico and Russia? Ah, because in Russia, there are more factors of production or a better technology. And that is what explains this distance between Mexico and Russia. Why this has been behaving different between Russia and Mexico? According with the neoclassical position, because of factors of production and technology. Yeah. Do you get it? That is the simple answer. Uh, I will say even quite stupid. When I was a student, I was looking at this. Obviously, I was not convinced that the difference between the US and Mexico was just because of factors of production and technology. Seems to me that there are many other things. And that is also true. There are many other things explaining the distance in economic growth between countries. But the most important explanation, and this is the reason why I'm still explaining that here, is what I just mentioned. It's still the most important. There could be many other things, but later when we try to measure that, we will find that actually factors of production and technology are the most important variables explaining this. And you can have tons of other variables explaining that, and the relevance of these other tons of variables will be very small. Measure, when you are doing this model, transforming this model, the yeah, economic growth rate in per capita terms, and assuming that N in the video L labor, but let me assume that this is population. If I want to remove, to simplify the model in per capita terms, so I divide in everything by population. If I divide in by population, so I can remove this variable from my equation. And that is what we are doing here in this model. What is happening with my model in per capita terms? Well, you can follow the maths, it's quite simple. And in the end, you will find that when you are removing the impact of population labor, assuming that all population is affecting this. So in per capita terms, you know what is per capita terms, divided by population or individual. So the increase, this economic growth rate, will depend on what? In this proportion that I'm telling you that capital is important for your economic growth and this increase in per capita terms of your capital, the amount of machines per person, plus what? Your level of technology. What this means is you are analyzing this data here, I had the per capita GDP. So I have here in levels, the first equation, and here in per capita terms, this is what is happening. And therefore you can see that it's different. Yeah, depend, uh, the economic growth rate in Mexico in levels and versus per capita terms is different. When there is a crisis, obviously there is a crisis, right? It's a negative number, but you can see that the economic growth rates are different when you are taking into account population usually smaller because Mexican population has been increasing. Could not be the case of China because of the policies in China, right? But this is what I'm discussing now. If you are doing this in per capita terms, according with my most basic model, that is the solo model, what is playing the economic growth rate in per capita terms is just how much is changing your capital per capita, the capital per person, and the share that this is relevant for your uh, economic growth rate. Plus what? Technology, and technology is here, kind of important. A, ideas, depending on the model, is slightly different. Most of the time we're talking about this as technology. In the video, they mention ideas. It's also another, for, another way to call this productivity and so on. Here in your textbook and your answer is according to your textbook. Well, do not forget, A is representing technology.